Hey, good people. Welcome back to Beauty and the Frizz. My name is Kara. Whether you're new or returning, thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out with me for another day of Frizzmas. Today is mimosas and makeup, and I have a mimosa. Move this. I'm sorry, y'all. This is just embarrassing. Okay, y'all might still see that back there. I'm so sorry. Anyway, my mimosa has J. Roche Brut, orange juice, and a little bit of pineapple rum, just for an extra boost. I am so excited to be talking about the wintry palettes in my collection. I love going through my collection because it's so much. If you wanna talk about winter palettes with me, keep watching this video, let me know what you think. And if makeup is your therapy and your love, if it makes you happy and you wanna hang out with someone that feels the same way, definitely consider joining the community. I'd love to have you back. All right, let's get started. All right, you guys, I have- Mom, you have pizza? Yeah, we're having pizza again, yes. I have 15 palettes that I wanna chit chat about. Let's just jump right in. Well, first of all, let's come up further. No, you may not have my phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't need you to be sorry. So what makes a wintery palette? I guess that's what we should start with. Um, it's just kind of what gave me that vibe when I look through my collection. So as we go through the palettes, we're gonna chit chat about them. We're gonna swatch some shades. We're gonna just talk about what is it that gives us this wintry vibe. And maybe it'll make you pull out some of the palettes in your collection that you haven't really played with in a while. Maybe give you some inspo, some motivation. Let's jump right in. Now the first palette is the palette that I am wearing and I did film this look. The video was not up yet, but it will be up. This is the Catching the Naughty palette from Notoriously Morbid. This was the holiday palette from last year and they restocked it recently. Are you recording? I am. Can you tell, can you tell Marky to spend time with his own brother? With his own brother? I will tell Marky to spend time with his own brother, I, okay? I just, I went in, then he said, then he said, get out. You know why? <coughs> it's the cough. It's not you, okay? Stop. I'll be out soon, all right? Don't worry. Every time I go somewhere where he is, he leaves. He only leaves. So Marky has a high sensitivity to coughing, but not just anyone coughing, only when August coughs. And so anytime August goes to spend time with Marky, Marky comes out of the room and it is making Mark August feel sad. And I understand. It's frustrating. I, it's frustrating. I, so I really do acknowledge how you feel and I have tried to talk with Marky about it, but for some reason he feels like your cough is really bad. I know it's, I just, not, it's not. How about this? When I come out there, I'll sit with both of you. Yeah. All right, I will. I, I will. I just don't want it. I'm very happy. Makes me happy. Hi, can I show you something? Show them what? Like new chain. Okay. August wants to show y'all his new chain, which is my chain. It's not even a chain it's I wear anymore. Gold. It's not real gold, but it you looks know, like real gold. It does. It's supposed to look like real gold. Okay, go ahead. Can I see it? They can see it, but you're putting it too close. It's it's not real gold. That's so. okay though. It's okay. Everything doesn't Don't have to ask be real. If this costs a million dollars. But it didn't, because it's not real cool. Bye, August. All right, come on. Because I, I really need to get this done so we can hang out. I mean, I don't need to get it done, but I would like to get it done, because I really enjoy talking about eyeshadow palettes, because I have so many. Thank you, August. I love you. Say hard barb in the video. I'm not saying hard barb this time. I just said it. Okay. Catching the Naughty 2021 release from Notoriously Morbid. And it was restocked this year. And here is the palette. It's got some great shades. My favorite is Grub Bomb Crumpus. I'll talk about it in the video. 
And I just love how Notoriously Morbid kind of did a grungy palette. I thought that was really cool of them to do that. We have Punishing Yuletide, Fanged. I mean, they're just really cool shades, you know? So I really appreciated this release from the brand and was happy to have all of the other things that came with this collection. It definitely gives me a grungy winter vibe and I am happy to have it. I think I said that like three times. So we're gonna move on. And again, stay tuned because this video is coming up where I create this look that I actually really, really like. Now this palette is my first introduction to Unearthly Cosmetics which was then Alien Cosmetics. I love the artwork here. And this was simply called the Holiday Palette. Very first palette from the brand, no shade names. Very beautiful though. And this was the first time that I tried one of those wet feeling dual chromes that indie brands do. It still feels like that. I never felt an eyeshadow like that. Again, no shade names. Let's just see how some of these swatch because Again, this palette is, you know, two years old. Still going strong though. Look at that, really pretty. Beautiful winter vibes. This palette I thought at one time would be the closest thing that I could get to Muerte, but I think I like this one better. <laughs> but it's a great palette. Oh my gosh, I have a video with this. This is one of my earlier videos. Just a really nice palette, unique color story. It was definitely unique at the time for me because I was just building my eyeshadow collection. So that's number two. Palette number three for Winter Vibes. Y'all, I just found her. She had been lost for months and I was just like, I know she's here, like, but where is she? She is not with her siblings. And it was just hiding like in a bottom drawer. But Mary Jane, this palette, you know what this gives me? This gives me dirty snow. You know, once the snow isn't fresh anymore, it's just dirty. You know what I mean? Like along the sidewalk where the cars have been and you have that black and brown snow. That's what this reminds me of. And I really, really like this palette. I did have to revamp a few things with this palette. I took out the original shimmers and replaced them with Give Me Glow shades. And these work way better than the shimmers that were there previously. As we know, Melt can be hit or miss with their formula, but the rest of these shades are really great. I almost returned this palette just because I just couldn't figure out how to work with it. And I am having that same issue with the Gemini 2 palette. I'm hoping that I'll be able to really create some nice looks with Gemini 2 once I learn to work with it, the same way I learned to work with this palette. But these have some really, really grungy, great shimmers. Santa Maria is one of them that I love so much. Look at that. It's like, soot or something. I love that one. I love Bomba. And you'll see that some of these just have really slight differences. So I think the key with some melt palettes for me is to not use too many shades. Just let the shades shine on their own. The mattes are really good in this palette as well. All of them. First of all, let me show you Sweet Lucy. That's another shimmer. And you know, Melt's been having some sales. So if this is something that you were interested in, I would definitely recommend Mary Jane, especially if you like these kind of grungy, like industrial type color stories. Let's just look at a couple of the mattes. Gaspar is great. And remember, this was their 420 palette. This was supposed to be inspired, I think, by the ash and by the, the smoke, you know? So, I mean, these are great mattes. Since Amelia is another one, oh, look at that. You just go in lightly with this palette because it is really, really grungy and pigmented. So I enjoyed this one so much, but when I thought about winter palettes, it doesn't always have to be like icy and blue. You know, I think these grungy tones, think about like a winter forest with trees with no leaves, just branches. You know what I mean? I think this encompasses that as well. So that's why I wanted to put this on my list of wintry palettes. I am gonna go wash this off because these are pretty deep, so. All right, I've got a clean arm, 
Let's get into palettes four and five. We're gonna move away from Indie just for a second. We will come back. I've got two palettes from Mama Pat. Now I think the obvious one is going to be the Mothership One Subliminal. And this is her cool toned palette. And up until Mothership 10, this was her only cool toned Mothership. I just think this palette really has some beautiful, beautiful winter vibes. Of course, I'm gonna swatch Blitz Blue. She doesn't give us blues too much, so definitely have to swatch this one. One of the smoothest blues that I have in my collection. VR Violet is really pretty. There's VR Violet. And then the rest of these are just great. They just go with the season. The cool tones, the taupes, the lavenders. This is not a palette that I used right away. I think I had this palette for at least a year before I pulled it out and used it, which is a shame because I really liked what I came up with. Here's Astral White. So yeah. This definitely gives me like snowstorm vibes, wintry vibes, and it's one of her most unique motherships. It definitely moved up in my ranking this year. I'm going to leave this one out because I really wanna play around with it. I think that with the Blitz Blue shape, it's not something that I'm gonna wear a lot, but just like I did with the Notoriously Morbid blue shade under the lower lash line, I really like that. And even using Blitz Blue as a liner, that would definitely be something that I would do more so on a regular basis. I'm sure there's an occasion where I would wear Blitz Blue all over the lid, but on a daily basis, it would be nice to use Blitz Blue as a liner. I did that with Blitz Flame from the Mothership 5 palette, the Bronze Seduction palette, and I loved how that came out because you can still use those special shades without using them all over the lid. So that's the obvious winter palette from Pat McGrath. But the one that I don't think anybody would really consider a winter palette is the Bridgerton palette, the very first one. I have actually come to like this palette. And you know what this palette reminds me of? It reminds me of Frozen. And that's what gives me the winter vibe. Now it's only one shade, but if you are familiar, we have Elsa and we have Anna. Anna wore more of like the mauve toned dress and she had the brown hair. And then Elsa, you know, she was the ice queen. She had the, you know, blonde hair and then the, the icy blue dress. So that really made me think about this Bridgerton palette. So let's swatch Regency Blue here. I'm gonna be bringing both Bridgerton palettes out for video because I've heard several people say that they have seen these in TJ Maxx. So I'd love to do an updated, you know, look inspo video with these Bridgerton palettes. And I'm just gonna swatch Love Match. These shades in here make really great blushes as well. And you can even use this one here, which is Iconic Ingenue. You can use this as a highlighter. So if she just stopped the Bridgerton collection here, you know, I think it would have been okay. But with Bridgerton 2 coming out and it being really similar, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. But wanted to include that in my winter palette lineup. All right, we're gonna stay luxury for a bit. And we have a quad here from Thomas. This is number two, Soleil at Loon. I definitely purchased this once it was no longer available. Again, you know, I didn't get into makeup until towards the end of 2019. So this was long gone, but I definitely stalk Macari and Poshmark and eBay to try to get good deals. I've used this one a couple of times. This just reminds me of, I don't know. You know what it reminds me of? I don't know why, I don't know where this came from, but like being at a bougie ski resort. That's what it makes me think of because it's Tom Ford and you've got this wet dry formula. These to me are really good for one and done looks. I have the Apres Ski quad as well. That one has like more peaches in it, but kind of the coolness of like 
this mint green and this icy gray let's go ahead and swatch this one because i definitely haven't swatched this in a while and again this is the wet dry formula so if you want them to pop more you're gonna want to use them wet we definitely have a snowy shade there we've got this like peach and then we have the gray and then last we have the green so there's Soleil at Loon. Again, I love this more for like a one and done or maybe like two shades, maybe. Mel Thompson, y'all, if you have this or need inspo for it, she does such a beautiful look with all three of the quads that were with this release. Uh, again, they were before my time. This is the only one that I do have. I think I really wanna wear this green so maybe i'll put that on for work kind of as like a one and done shade and yeah it's got like the white winter white packaging this definitely says winter to me so i wanted to bring this out this is not one that i show a lot so definitely wanted to give it some love i think i'm almost done with my bougie shadows seven eight and nine all belong to dior let's start with holiday 2020 we have the black knight Quint, make sure, because this is my pants had fallen out and I super glued them back in so I can show them now. I love just looking at this. This is not the easiest one to use because it is so deep, but Black Knight, this gives me Game of Thrones vibes as well. Winter fell, you know what I'm saying? And this one's like really sparkly. I'm just gonna swatch them and then show it all to you up close. The silver's great in this one. And then we have a navy, which is almost black. Like you, you cannot use all of these because it's gonna just look like one grungy shade. You know what I mean? It's just not gonna work. And then this really, really deep burgundy shade. I love this one. There's Black Knight. So yeah, this gives me like, eerie winter vibes you know what i mean not just frolicking in the freshly fallen snow this is like mm, something's about to happen <laughs> and that's what it makes me think of but yeah this one's not the easiest to use so i always look for inspo if i want to use this one because it's kind of tricky i think with the dior quince two to three shades at best but it's not like my indie where I can go and use like five shades or even six sometimes. These, you just gotta keep it simple. Now, also releasing with Black Knight was Golden Snow. And Golden, okay, that's not Golden Snow, that's Black Bow. So Black Bow, I was gonna put Black Bow on this list, but I'm not. It is a bit similar to Black Knight, so. Black Bow had gotten put to the side. Let me find Golden Snow, cause that's what I'm looking for. All right, so here's Golden Snow. And these two quints were like my first intro to Dior. I was kinda like, uh, cause I had just gotten into indie and then you play with these and you're like, what's the point? Very beautiful, very simple. This is like fancy holiday party, you know what I mean? Whereas this is like, I said, you're lost in the forest, okay. So I love, you've got this beautiful uh, chartreuse shade. Got a brown here, just a satin. And I'll show these up close. Got a beautiful peach. They, they have nice pigmentation, but they're not gonna swatch like Sydney Grace or anything. Then you have like a, a champagne and then a, a beautiful gold. So there's golden snow. I mean, you know, they're very, very simple, you know? I definitely have to be like in a certain mood or want a certain look to pull this one out, but I really do like it. And then palette nine from Dior is one I purchased this year. This was the velvet formula and this is blue velvet. And I really like this one. Um, especially, you know, coming from someone who's not into blues, but I really like the blues that are here. Let me just swatch a couple of the blues. So 
you know, it's making me think like cloudy day, you know, and then you have this like nice lavender here, which is a contrast for it. I really like this one. You know what? It gave me like a fairy vibes when I did this video. I wasn't mad at it, but again, you have to be in a certain mood for this type of eyeshadow. People say it's a sophisticated formula. I'm not sure if I know exactly what that means because I sometimes think when people say sophisticated, it means like it's not really pigmented. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not sure what that means, but I'm not gonna say it's a sophisticated formula. I'm just gonna say it's not like an indie eyeshadow formula. It's not a bam in your face formula. I don't necessarily think that means sophisticated. So that's just my personal take on it. But I did wanna include Blue Velvet. I just tried to think of like all the palettes that came to my mind before I actually went through them. And this was one of them. Palette number 10 is one that I can say I need to pull out more. This is Eternal Eclipse from Lunar Beauty. Not sure if this one's still available or not, but it is a really nice, palette and what i like about this palette is that you've got the neutrals but then you've got the cool tones and i think that the neutrals with these blues really do make for a nice wintry palette night sky it's a black with sparkle i don't know if you can see this you have to see that sparkle there look how pretty that is i know that didn't swatch that didn't swatch great at all i'll be honest but it looks really nice. You know, sometimes you can't see those sparkly shades on the eye, but it looks nice when you show it. We have Starry Eyed, which is a beautiful gray shimmer. And this one was like more space, you know, inspired, but I, I do feel like it has those winter vibes. We have Meteor here, which is kind of a, let's see if it's, it looks a little bit taupey. Yeah, it's like a taupe. So that's really pretty. And then again, you have your neutral mattes here that are more warm. You have a gold. I just think you can make some really different looks with this palette. You can just go all cool toned or you can mix them. And I really like mixing blue and brown. So I wanted to put this on the list and show it some love. I do think this is a really nice palette. Okay, I have five palettes left. So let's do number 11. This is the Nomad Palette Whistler Snow Lodge. And this came out, I wanna say, was it at the beginning of 2022? This was inspired by the slopes of Whistler, British Columbia. And I think this was a cool color story. It wasn't my favorite palette from Nomad. Let me just check out the shimmers because it's the shimmers with Nomad that kind of make or break how I feel about that particular palette. So let's look at Black Comb, which is a beautiful blue. Yeah, okay, so this one looks good. Whistler is like a minty green. Oh, that one's nice as well. There was a shade in here I'm not sure if I liked. It might have been Ski Bum and then Ski In. Let me just check them out. This is like a duochrome. Maybe it wasn't. No, actually not bad, not bad at all. I'm gonna check Ski In. I know the shade I loved was so amused, which was the brown. So let me just check these last two out. So there's Ski In, and then so amused the brown. Let's just put it here. I really like that one a lot. This palette was a nice palette now that I'm looking at the shimmers, but Nomad shimmers are not my favorite and they're hit or miss for me. I think that I recall having trouble coming up with what types of looks I wanted to do with this palette. I cannot remember. I will have to go back and watch the video, but it does give me the winter vibes. I did want to showcase this and I do love how Nomad uses their destinations as inspirations for their palette. I love how they do their shade names and I enjoy researching the different locations that they use for their palette inspo. So it's like traveling, but staying at home, which I'm trying to change. 
All right, palettes 12 and 13 kind of go together. They are from Unearthly Cosmetics. We have Into the Dark and Dead of Night. Into the Dark was part of last year's holiday collection and Dead of Night was from this year. Now I did get this one this year. I was sent this one, so I haven't really touched it. It's kind of a twist on a winter color story because this kind of throws it off. Kind of that grungy, it's called Obscure, that grungy, brownish green shade kind of reminds me of maybe bravo from sydney grace i'm curious about the looks i would make with this palette i feel like i could be possibly stumped let's check out the shade numinous these are the more ooh, dense packed shadows but oh look at that that is really pretty and let's swatch illusion now, I'll be honest, this is not my favorite color story, but as I was going through my collection, these do give me like winter vibes. Like I said, some of them are those like light and fun, and some of them are more like eerie. This will go in the eerie category. Palette 13 is The Dead of Night. I really like this one. And this was like starry winter night. It's kind of galactic though, and outer spacey, like with the moons and everything. But I thought this was great, like for winter looks, using these grays here. But then you kind of have this twist with these kind of green shades, you know what I mean? Let's swatch Dead of Night. Look how pretty that one is. That is really pretty. Let's check out Nightfall. It's a beautiful gray shimmer. Let's look at Forest. So yeah, these are nice. I don't go for these types of color stories too much. Mm, looking at this again, is this giving me winter? I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's staying on the list though, because I want to have 15 palettes, not 14. <laughs> so in any case, you get to see the palette. Unearthly Cosmetics is not taking new orders at this time because they are working on fulfillment. But hopefully, you know, once they get that all taken care of, they will be back to accepting orders. But I know that once they get that all taken care of, they will be back to accepting orders. But I love this. It stays on the list. And palette 14, this is one of my favorite, favorite palettes. This is Quintessence. I love this. You know, I think that these palettes kind of give me like these icy vibes. This is definitely a galactic palette. But when I think of winter, I think of cool tone. I think of grays and blues. Not so much those purples that we saw in the last palette, but the grays, the blues, the blacks. But I love this. All of this here, this whole column right here, and then this shade, and then this shade, they all say winter to me. And I just love like the punch that the Sydney Grace shadows have. They don't really do a whole lot of dual chromes. You know, they have their cream shadows, they have dual chromes, but I love what I get when I get a Sydney Grace palette. That's all I can really say. Might be my favorite eyeshadow formula. I need to start working on that video. Milky Way. Did I say this was the collab with Tim Talia? That's a dual chrome actually. So beautiful. Serious sunlight. Look at that. And then like reaching zenith and parallax. And this is the light version. I believe I got the light version because I really like the mattes in these. I just love this palette. Let's swatch Aurora and Celestial Bloom, these two. There's Aurora and then Celestial Bloom. Out of all three Tentalia palettes, I thought I was gonna like this one the least and I like it the most. I still really, really love this release. And I know some people say that the palettes look the same, but I don't think they do. So that's gonna be my number 14. And we're gonna end this video with number 15, one of my brand new palettes. This is the Christmas Eve palette from Odin's Eye. You guys, I love this palette way more than I thought. I was so happy with the looks and I love how it says winter to me, but it still has warmth in it. And just think about that because in winter, we like to stay warm. You know, people like to drink hot chocolate. They like to sit by the fire. So you get all of that in this palette and it 
also is really, really earthy. So I was really happy that I purchased this palette. So this one does have a multi-chrome. It's this shade right here, gorgeous, which it is. And sometimes when I try to show these types of shades on camera, I just feel like they're not really showing up the way that they need to. But look at that. I think you can see that shift there. It is gorgeous. I love that. Softly is one of my favorite shades. It's kind of like a grungy, I don't know, brown, kind of mossy type shade. We have Fleeting Time, a nice bronze sitting by the fire. Look at that. So pretty. So many great shades in here. Snowflake, Ice Crystal. They're beautiful. You have Blue Star, Blue Ice. What's up? That chicken was hard. The what? The chicken. How would I know? I was going to put it in the oven. Well, I'm I sure it was hard. Done. Mm, I wasn't. Okay, let me finish. I'll be out in two minutes because I didn't tell you to bite in the cold chicken. Slivery Dream. Talk about that chicken was hard. I don't even know how you bit it and you don't have any teeth. It's a beautiful taupe. I feel like my camera's just not really working with me right now, but love this palette for winter and love the palettes on the list. Some of them might've been a stretch. Let me know. But that was my list. That's the list I came up with and I'm gonna go ahead and stick to it. So let me know some of your favorite winter palettes or let me just know the winter palettes that you have in your collection, whether you use them, whether you like them. Well, I hope you like them, but you know how we have things that sometimes we just don't like them anymore. So let me know what you think. I also would love to know whether or not you pull out makeup based on the season. Do you go for wintry Christmas type looks in the summer? Does it matter? For me, I was thinking about this palette that I have on. It's gonna be very rare for me to do a look with this palette. I think it looks nice, but it's just not my favorite go-to type of look. The looks that I love are just more warm. So some of these palettes I'm gonna use a little more than others. Like I could see myself going for the Christmas Eve palette from Odin's because it's earthy, it's warm, and it's cool. And it just makes me think of winter. But a lot of these other ones, I'm just not sure. I need to play a little more with Eternal Eclipse. I just feel like I haven't played with that too much. I wanna do more with Mary Jane because I, I like that one. It's just grungy goodness, you know what I mean? What else did we pull out? Bridgerton, I definitely am gonna do a updated video on that. But yeah, these are palettes that I probably don't show you a lot because I'm just not that cool toned girl. So I don't have as many of the cool tone palettes as I do the warm tones. So I really just wanted to show them some love today. So wintery slash cool tone palettes, that's what this video was all about. Let me know some of your favorites. Let me know if you have any of these or let me know some palettes you would put on the list. That's gonna be it, you guys. Thank you so much for taking out some of your time and hanging out with me for another Mimosas and Makeup and another day of Christmas. I hope this was therapy for you. It always is for me. Until I see you again, make sure you are being gentle with yourself. Talk to yourself nice, stay safe, and I will see y'all tomorrow. Bye.